Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. Today's video is going to be a review of a few new makeup releases. So I've been kind of toying around with doing a video like this where I incorporate multiple reviews into one video and there are a lot of products that I've been able to test out recently that I wanted to share my thoughts on and I didn't want to necessarily do dedicated reviews for each of these products so I figured it would be nice if I could just throw them all together give you some mini reviews on them. So I have four new releases that I want to chat with you guys about today. We are going to be talking about the Urban Decay Back Talk palette. I'll give you my thoughts on this as well as the new Urban Decay lip glosses. I also was able to find one of the Wet n Wild Liquid Catsuit Liquid Eyeshadows from the Gothographic Collection. I'm a little late on this one, but I still wanted to share my thoughts since I posted a photo of this on my Instagram when I got it and you guys wrote, kept messaging me and saying you wanted to hear my thoughts. And I also wanted to give you my review on the Ofra Cool as a Cucumber Primer. This is a new primer from Ofra, but I don't feel like I've heard anyone review it. So I wanted to share my thoughts on all four of these. Let me know if you'd like me to continue to do videos like this where I talk about a couple of new releases that I've been able to test out. Maybe this could be a series. You never know. Let me know what you'd like to see. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I upload four days a week, Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But for now, let's go ahead and hop into the video. So first let's talk about this liquid eyeshadow from Wet n Wild. The shade that I picked out was Pure Intention, but I actually think I want to go back and get the second darkest or second lightest shade. This is the lightest one that they have and I will show a swatch of it for you guys. It is very, very pretty. I've been wearing this a lot recently. You may have noticed it on my eyes in a lot of videos. So this is what the shade looks like. Um, of course, I've only tried one of the colors, so I can't speak for the formula across the board if there are consistencies, but based on the one that I've tried, I'm actually very impressed with this. The first time that I tried it out, I didn't think that I liked it because I really layered a lot of this up, and when you do that, it gets... It kind of cracks a little bit. It doesn't wear so well when you really layer it up. And if you try to put the product on and then blend eyeshadow over it, this, the liquid eyeshadow, will start flaking off. You're going to get fallout on your face. Personally, I think it looks best if I just apply a really light amount of it and kind of dot it in. I've been dotting it in with the Wet n Wild Small Concealer Brush. Let me grab that. This brush retails for $1 and I just pat the product in with that. And I have also, if I wanted even less product, I've um, just dipped my brush into this. But typically I like to just apply it straight on to my eye. It's really pretty. Like I said, I want to pick up another shade. I don't recommend layering a lot of it on. You will get glitter fallout, but overall, but overall, I think it's really great for being $4.99. Next, I want to share my thoughts on the Urban Decay Hi-Fi Lip Glosses. So I mentioned these in my monthly favorites video, and I told you guys that I would only felt comfortable calling them an honorable mention because at the time that I was filming that video, I hadn't had a chance to test them out as long as I would have liked to, but now I feel like I've had an opportunity to really play around with the different formulas. The one I'm wearing today, I'm just wearing this. It's the shade SPL. And they come in four different formulas. So you have a cream, sheer cream, holographic, and metallic. My personal favorite formula is the cream because that's just my preference when it comes to lip glosses. I like a lip gloss that I can wear on its own, not necessarily lip gloss toppers, whereas the other three formulas are a little bit more like lip gloss toppers. So this one, today I went with a very light natural makeup look, so I wore it on its own, but if I was going for a more glam look, I'd probably top this with a different lip product, but I do really like these. One thing that I think is uh, interesting is that some of the colors in the tube look so unique and a little bit intimidating. These three, for example, this is the shade Big Bang. Um, gold mine and candy flip but all of these apply a lot more sheer than they look so I'll swatch them out for you again this shade is big bang I mean it's definitely pink but it's not as sparkly intense as it is in the packaging and I mean it's showing up more pink on my hand but even when I apply it to my lips it does sheer out a little bit this was the shade gold mine Again, when I swatch it on my hand, it shows up a little more, it shows up closer to what it looks like in the tube, but when you put it on your lips, it really does sheer out quite a bit, and then I'll show Candy Flip. 
This one is the one that I think looks the most different from what it looks like in the tube versus on your hand. So even though some of these colors look very bold and a little bit intimidating, I do think you can sheer them out and wear them in, in a more subdued way if that's your preference. But if you're someone who just likes more sheer lip gloss to put on top of other matte lip products, I really think that you would enjoy these sheer creams. And the one that I think the most people would like, like if there's one color from this collection that I would pretty much recommend across the board, it's the shade Midnight Cowgirl. This is a sheer cream, but it has some really tiny gold flecks in it. So this just pairs really nicely on top of another lip product. Overall, I really like the formula of these. I appreciate that they're thin and even the opaque ones are still very comfortable and they're not sticky. I mean, all lip glosses are a little sticky, but these are probably the least sticky ones that I've ever tried. The only complaint that I have is when you wear the ones that are a little bit more glittery, um, if you layer a lot of the product on and you talk, it will start to build up on the inner rim of your lips. I only find that to happen with the glitter ones and that's only if I really layer it up and up to get the glitter to pop, but it's something to make note of. It's, it, those can get a little goopy. So next I wanna talk about this primer from Ofra. It's their Cool as a Cucumber Primer. So this is supposed to be both a primer and a moisturizer in one. When I first heard that, I expected it to be a little bit more like the Glossier Prime Rich Moisturizer, which is one of my favorites. It's a very heavy, hydrating primer. And this is a little bit thinner than that. I don't wanna say thinner, but it's not as heavy. Um, I don't want to say thinner. Thin is not the correct definition because this is still a thick product. You can see I'll pump some out of my hand. It's still a thick product, but it's, um, it's not as intensely moisturizing. So it actually is green like a cucumber. I don't like the cucumber scent of this, which is weird because I love cucumbers, but, and I love the scent of it, but this one, I don't know. It smells, I don't, I really don't like the scent of this. I overall just think this is okay. It gives you some moisture. I don't think it's exceptional at priming my skin. I do find though, one thing I will say is if you put it on and really rub it in, the more you rub it into your skin, it does start to give you a bit of a tacky base. So if that's your preference and you like putting your foundation on top of something tacky for it to grip onto, you definitely can do that with this if you rub it in enough. Overall, I definitely don't dislike it, and I would say if you have somewhat dry skin, maybe not if you have super dry skin, but if you have a little bit, you have some dry patches here and there, you might enjoy this, but personally, I just didn't find it to be anything special. And last but not least, I do wanna share my thoughts on the Back Talk palette from Urban Decay. Um, I said DK, really funny, Urban Decay. This was sent to me, I, uh, I don't think I would have picked it up otherwise, to be completely honest, it's just not, um, I just feel like I have things like this in my collection already, but basically if you haven't heard of much about this palette yet, it has two sides, you have an eyeshadow side as well as a blush side and a mirror that pops out. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on this because I feel like there have already been a lot of reviews on this and I don't feel like I have anything new to really add to them. I definitely agree with all the statements that the shimmer shades are pretty sheer. They're really not foiled or metallic or anything. If anything, when I apply some of these shimmer shades, they almost go on like a matte, like a semi-sheer matte. So. I do like the matte shades. It only does have uh, three matte shades on the eyeshadow side. I do really like this shade Back Talk right here. I'm wearing this palette today. It's the only palette that I have on my eyes. And I'm actually the only palette that I have on my face also. I didn't wear any bronzer today. I'm just wearing the shade Cheap Shot on my cheeks. And I'm wearing this Highlight Party Foul on the tops of my cheekbones. I definitely think the face side is better than the eyeshadow side. <sighs> These just really are not Urban Decay eyeshadow quality. Usually I really like their shadows. The mattes are fine, like I said, but the shimmers are just really, you have to build them up. And even if you wet your brush, you, you almost can't build them up. It's kind of crazy. They are not pigmented at all. But, I mean, at the, at the end of the day, like I do like the look that I did on my eyes today. It's very soft. So if that's your preference, I've seen some people who actually really like this because that's the look that they go for, is something very soft. If you're not into dramatic eye looks, you might like this. Personally, it's not my favorite. On the face side, 
I'm not obsessed with this highlighter. Um, I think on camera it's showing up really pretty, but in person, um, I just don't feel like it does anything for me. And the packaging of this is really quite silly because you have to insert the mirror in a specific way, otherwise the palette won't stay shut because the magnets won't attach. So the mirror has to always go in. Okay, so that took a while. I had to keep playing around with it, moving the mirror over and over because you have to place it in the palette a specific way for the magnets to match up and the palette to close. So that's kind of frustrating. Um, it's very bulky. I know it's supposed to be convenient to travel with, but I don't even think I'd want to travel with this. I would almost rather just take a face palette and an eyeshadow palette because it would still take up less space because then you have maybe not less space but I don't feel like it would take up any more space than this um I don't I don't hate it like I said I really enjoy the look that I have going on today if you like a very soft makeup look you could really appreciate this palette um I see it going on sale in the future. I mean, I don't know that it will, but I feel like a lot of Urban Decay's limited edition products do find their way on sale a few months down the road. So if it was something you wanted to try, you might want to wait and see if it does go on sale. Overall, mm, out of 10 stars, I'm going to give it a four. It's not like the worst palette ever, but I don't really recommend it. All right, so to wrap this up, I just want to run through quickly the best and worst. Uh, for me, the best thing here, the number one thing that I would recommend from this video is this Wet n Wild eyeshadow. Like I said, I've only tried the lightest shade Pure Intention, so I can't speak for all of the shades, but I do want to pick up more. And for $4.99, I think it's definitely worth checking out. The next product in order of which I would recommend, I definitely enjoy these lip glosses. I wish they were a little bit less than $20. I wish the price tag was more like $18, especially when the Vice lipsticks are only $17. But I love the formula. It has a really nice um, collection of shades, so highly recommend the lip glosses as well. The Ofra Primer. I could take it or leave it. I don't necessarily go out of my way to recommend it, but I also don't think it's horrible. And kind of the same with the Back Talk palette. It's really not my favorite. I would recommend pretty much every other Urban Decay palette that I've tried over this one. But I do still think if you like a soft look, you might like it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want me to continue doing a series in this format, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!